Brandon Moreno, the champion, man. Mexico's first UFC champion, uh, na native Mexico. Not Cain Velasquez, but, you know, Brandon Moreno. And this is the trilogy match against Duce de number one ranked Davis and Figueredo, man. Moreno opened up as a minus 175 favorite with a plus 150 comeback for Figueredo. But how definitive the second fight of this trilogy was, do you think that Brandon Moreno should be a bigger favorite? Or do you think that just because of the history of Figueredo, they're just showing the man some respect in terms of the betting line? What do you think? Man, I think history does come into play on this one because Figueredo, let's, you know, let's not mince words. I do think he won that first fight. I mean, it came out to a draw because he lost that point, but he was doing well, man. He was putting it to him. And then you have the aspect of the second fight because that was a very definitive win for Moreno. But Figgy had a little bit of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Where he, he not not necessarily excuses. You know, he was tired. He was feeling sick. He was throwing up. Nobody feels good going into the fights. But Davis and Figueroa just wasn't on his game that one man, and it really showed because Brandon Moreno absolutely put it to him. Nothing like the first fight. The second fight was absolutely incredible for Brandon Moreno. This fight going forward, I think we're going to see a very motivated Figueroa, and I think that's why the the steam's leading a little bit more towards Figueroa. A lot of people have chosen him. Even Uncle Chael chose him. So it's going to be interesting to see how it actually folds if it's going to be a lot like the first fight if it's going to be more like the second fight this one's going to be interesting man i'm excited for this grudge match coming forward what about you derek i'm very excited but um i have one big takeaway from this matchup that i i think that this is why the betting line is skewed a little bit right so in the second fight we were able to see brandon moreno take the center of the octagon and hold it for the majority of the fight and in the first fight, Figueredo just walked Moreno down back against the KGB. That's where Figueredo does his best work, man. He's a powerhouse at 125 for a reason. He has rare power in the men's flyweight division. But he had he's like, I consider Figueredo to be an avalanche type fighter. And what I mean by that is you can't let him get rolling. You know what I mean? You can't let him get started. Because once he gets started, oh, it's gonna be a long night for you. You know what I'm saying? So if you can do, if you can somehow negate him getting started, if you can negate him moving forward. If you could beat him with speed, if you can do all of these little things to get him out of his flow, out of his groove, out of his rhythm, we will see the fighter that we saw in the second fight where everything was winging. It was one, two at a time where Moreno is hitting you left hook to the body, right hand over the top, calf kick, every, you know what I mean? He's hitting you in all these different things, confusing you. I think Figueredo definitely didn't deal with the speed well in the last fight. So I think that this should, I honestly think Brandon Moreno might be a minus 250 favorite in my book, in my sports book that I'm running over here, you know what I'm saying? Um, just because Figueredo, it seems like Moreno has his number mentally and physically. And what I mean by that is, like I said, Moreno was able to hold the center of the cage because in the first fight, he realized I could take this man's power. It's This is not not a game changer it's not a life-changing power okay even though I don't want to get hit, I can beat him with the speed. I can beat him with my feints. If I show him uh, I have no respect for him and if I bully the bully, this is a different fighter. This isn't that big boogeyman that is able to just, you know what I mean, scare everybody off by walking him down and touching him one time. I mean, look at what he did to a Joseph Benavides. He knocks him out and then he strangles the life out of him in the next fight. Joseph Benavides is one of the best flyweights to do it in the history of the UFC. So with all that being said, I think Moreno is a, uh, he should be a favorite, a little bit more of a favorite in this matchup. But I still think that this is going to be a competitive fight. Don't get me wrong. Figueredo can spark you with one shot. But I think Brandon Moreno really does respect that power. So do you think that's going to be a mistake in this matchup? Do you think Moreno should still be very, very cautious of the fighter named Dustigueta? Or do you think that, uh, you know, come in, fight the same fight you fought in the second fight and, uh, you know, rinse, wash, repeat? Man, I think Moreno needs to bully the bully on this one, man. He did so well for him in the second fight. But to that point, I think Figueredo knows what happened in that second fight. And he's not going to allow it to get going, man. That's what intrigues me most about this battle coming up fourth. Since they've had two basically very different fights, it's going to be interesting to see who's able to take that center of the octagon, be the bully, be the dog in there, and impose their will against the other fighter. I think that's the biggest key for Brandon Moreno is he needs to show Figueredo that he uh, that he has zero respect for his power. He can sit there and he can trade in there with the best of them. And to that point, man, Figueredo needs to prove that he is the top dog once again and really be that bully that he's used to being. Because when he fights that style of fight, he's basically uh, like un invincible, man, undefeatable. This dude is a, a powerhouse in there, like you said, man. As absolute power in the 125 pound division it's just can he be that dog again i think in this fight he's it's going to be a lot closer to that normal figurato style we're seeing 
Absolutely. I think one thing that people are failing to kind of realize or recognize or remember is that uh, Brandon Moreno actually was able to nullify Figueiredo's jiu-jitsu. He was actually able, like, Figueiredo has had Moreno in some bad spots uh, in terms of jiu-jitsu and Moreno being able to survive those, reverse position, grab the back, choke him out. I think that's a real testament to whose jiu-jitsu is a little bit more high level, at least on that night, you know what I mean? Because, uh, listen, man, that, that's just one of those things where it's like, it, it, it's not going to be the big highlight. You're going to see the striking, all that. That's going to be the big highlight from both of these fighters. But that that's what changes the game right there, is who has that ability to create a better sprawl? Who can do the thing that's just natural and grab the back and then sink in the choke? I think that's going to play into a big part. But I have a question for you before we give our picks on this, AJ. Bigger surprise. What would be a bigger surprise in your opinion? Brandon Moreno basically repeating the second fight and just, you know what I mean, basically from rounds one to round three or round five, however long it takes, putting it on Figueiredo, beating him in every aspect of the game, having his number, or this being a lot more reminiscent to the first fight where it's very back and forth and Figueiredo is knocking down Moreno and it's a, it's a crazy war. What would surprise you more, the war or the definitive one-sided fight on either for these fighters? So for one-sided for Moreno, one-sided for Figueiredo, or a war, what's the biggest surprise? I think the biggest surprise would be the definitive one way or the other for me, especially since these fighters know each other. I think we're in store for a war right here, man. I think we're in store for a five round slobber knocker fest, okay. man, uh, where it would be, it'd be more surprising to me. I guess less surprising if Figueredo was able to get it done because that's his style. More surprising if Brandon Moreno is really able just to impose his will again in the second, like he did in the second fight. Cause I think Figueredo having that experience to him against him He's not going to want to let that happen again. So he's going to do everything he can to not allow that to be. What do you think, Derek? Okay. Soft surprise face there. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, just because, man, if you like where I'm seeing Brandon Moreno and where I'm seeing him have his success, I'm just like, this man has Figgy's number when it comes down to like, all right, I know what the big shot's coming. I know I can hit him with this. If you look at him, Moreno has this very confident chin up. Yeah, what's up? You know, he has that very confident style. And I think that it's because he felt the power of a fake. Listen, man, I could be wrong. Obviously, both of us could be wrong. Who knows? We can't predict the future. We'll find out on fight night. But I do think it would not be shocking if Brandon Moreno had a very dominant victory against a Davis and Figueredo. I think it'd be a little more surprising in my eyes if Figueredo came in and just sparked Moreno. Just because it's like, okay... Was Moreno really that good or was he really just on that night or was Figgy just having a really bad night? Like we really, we don't know, honestly. Last question, um, what do you make of Henry Cejudo being in the corner of a Davis and Figueredo over there fighting at, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, do you remember what their gym is called? It's, uh, I want to say Fight Ready, but that's the uh, the one no. in Paris. No, I think it is Fight Ready. Right. Anyway, folks, somebody will Google it. Google it at home if you're really interested. But the point is, is over there with Cejudo and and uh, Coach Eric and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like ha having those guys in the mix and all that. Coach Eric was already there, but having Henry Cejudo in the corner, I think he's going to be legitimately cornering him. And the history between Brandon Moreno, he used to train with Cejudo and all that. What do you make of that before we give our picks on that, man? Do you think that's going to be an X factor in this one? Man, yeah, I think it is because anytime you can have that inside aspect, especially as much as, you know, Triple Cringe gets the a lot of the heat, I do think this dude is a very smart and intelligent fighter and he's able to break the game down. I've been watching a lot of his wrestling techniques videos that he puts out. Mm -hmm. Homeboy is very smart. I mean, oh, you can yeah. only get to the Olympics with being that way. <laughs> so I think the fact that he's in the corner of Figueredo is going to be a very, very uh, good tool to utilize, especially okay. in the aspect against Brandon Moreno. Okay, brother. Well, hey, man, listen, the over and under is four and a half rounds. What are you going? And still or and new? Ooh, I'm going with the over, Derek, and I'm going and still. I'm rocking with Brandon Moreno, man. I think it's going to be a very interesting fight going forward. Really going to have the heart test. This one, actually, man, I was having a very hard time choosing back and forth, whether I wanted Figueredo, whether I wanted Moreno. There was a lot of things going into this one. I think we're in store for a grinder of a fight coming forward. I don't think this one's going to be uh, going to be. I think I do think this one's going to be left to the judges. I'm going decision, and I'm going Brandon Moreno. What about you, Derek? All right, brother. Well, hey, I'm going to have to basically echo that sentiment. I'm going a decision win for Brandon Moreno as well. That means I will be taking the over on four and a half rounds. I just think that if Davis and Figueiredo has shored up his cardio a little bit, and if this is a little more competitive of a matchup than the second one is, which hopefully that's what we will be seeing. I think that this could be a very fun, fun five-round banger, but I do see Brandon Moreno getting the edge maybe, uh, you know, 
what it was, like three rounds to two or something like that. You know what I mean? Maybe four rounds to two or I don't know. My math doesn't add up at that point for round. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to be a little kind of a definitive win for Moreno, but it could be one of those where it was like close rounds where it's all like, you know, I mean, look at the Giga versus Calvin fight. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah, Calvin Cater was putting it on him, but Giga had his moments. So I think Figgy will have his moments, but Moreno will overall just kind of overwhelm a little bit and uh, retain the belt and still, baby. And then we keep the division pushing. Then again, don't be surprised, folks. A lot of people have been, predict have been predicting that there's going to be a lot of uh, turnover in the flyweight division. So we'll see, man. You, you never really know.